So last week I told you that if you come today, I want to share with you our goals for courageous faith. Uh, courageous faith is about growing in our faith. How I many know faith for many people is just something they study and something they learn, but that's not the same thing as growing in something. And so we're growing in our faith by applying what we're learning. We're talking about giving in faith because we can't be like God unless we become givers. God is a giver and he wants us to give. Life is not about what I get. Life is really about the value that I add to others. And it's about going in faith. It's about a lifestyle of living out our faith in our lifestyle locally, regionally, globally, wherever we're at, because God doesn't just want us to hold on to his, our faith. He wants us to share our faith as we go. Is this okay? And so today I want to share with you our goals for courageous faith. But to understand our goals, you have to understand this about Capital Christian Center. We live by five purposes that incorporate God's plan for our lives and for his church. If you've been through our discipleship classes, you would know these. And it's really important that you understand these purposes. Our first purpose is to love God through worship. How many know that's important? We were created by God for God to be the object of his love. And he is to be the object of our love. We were created to love God back. That's called worship. Second purpose is to know God through fellowship. How many know that God wants us in relationship with other people? And when I get in relationship with other people, I actually get to know God better. Yes. Something like, really? No. There, there, are, there are over 50 verses in the Bible that says one another. You can't do a one another verse without another. <laughs> and, and with the one another verse, I learned, to, I learned about God's patience. You know, have you ever understood... Um, being patient with somebody else helps you to understand how patient God is with you. How merciful God is when you have to be merciful to somebody else. You're like, okay, wow. God. It's like, wow, God, you, you really have a hard job putting up with people. It's like, yeah, you need to learn what I have to deal with. You need to get involved with some people. So I learn about God actually by getting involved with other people. That's called fellowship. That we know God through fellowship. Here's our third one is to serve God or grow in God by studying his word, growing in his word. His word shapes our life. His word becomes the foundation for our life. That's one of our purposes. The fourth one is to serve God by serving others. When we do it unto the least of these, we've done it unto the Lord. And the fifth one is to share Christ with the lost. These are the five purposes that God has for our life. We like to say it like this. If you're looking in scripture, Anything that Jesus wants us to do or be can be put in one of those five statements. Let me say that again. Anything that we are to do and anything we are to be can be put into one of those five statements. And that's what we're created for. Those are our purposes. So as we're growing in faith, giving in faith, going in faith, we have come up with five goals that relate to each one of those purposes. Now, when you came in, you got a little uh, folder that looks like this. If you'll open it up, there's a big word called faith right across the top of that. And here's an interesting thought. There are five letters in faith. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got five goals and we also have five letters. So we have a goal uh, for each letter as it relates to each of our five purposes. You get, you get it? So I want to share this real quickly with you today because we're in an incredibly important season here at Capital Christian Center. F stands for to fill God's house with 5,000 worshipers by our 30th anniversary, which is coming up in 2019. Now, that's about doubling where we're at right now. How many know that would be a good thing? <laughs> no, no. Listen to me very carefully. 
I, I, I work with a lot of churches. You guys know we have a pa- coaching network. We coach a lot of pastors. It takes an unselfish church to grow. Because growth gets uncomfortable. How many know when you add children to a marriage, a marriage can get stressed? How many know when you have growing, when a church grows, somebody gets in your parking spot? Someone gets in your seat? Makes it hard to get out of the building? No, it's like, it, it gets crowded. Takes up your space. And it takes an unselfish church to grow and Capital Christian Center has always been led by people who were unselfish when we were in a one bedroom trailer people were willing to be make up room in their life for new people when we were when we were in a a house when we were in a garage when we were in a small little uh, business place all along the way people kept saying let's make room in our hearts and our lives for new people why because God created us to worship him and he wants his house filled with worshipers. Remember, when I say 5,000, please don't think of a number. Every number has a name. Every name has a story and every story matters to God. See, people are not numbers. People are people. And our goal is reaching people. So to do this at the very bottom of that, it says how? by developing, building our new worship center here on this property. God has given us a phenomenal piece of property. This is the third busiest intersection in all of Thurston County. In case you haven't noticed, development is going on around here like crazy. Um, When we bought this piece of property, we had developers calling the Regal Cinema Group saying, please don't sell it to that church because that would be a waste of such good property. That property should be used for business, but God says, no, I'm going to give it to this church because we have the courage to develop it to its maximum, fullest potential. What a lot of people don't understand, we actually own land behind both restaurants over here. Our our ownership extends behind those restaurants. We want to develop this property to its maximum potential by expanding our seating capacity through a new worship center and, and, and to bring glory and honor to God. Um, when people drive by this location, let me ask you this question. How many started coming just because of where we're located? If you're in here, you just drove by. See, come on, somebody. What am I saying? What am I saying? We have one of the most important pieces of property in all of Thurston County, which is one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Washington. And what has God decided? His family should have it because I believe he trusted us to develop it. Uh, And again, please understand, if you you gotta know your pastor, we are not about buildings. Our goal is not a building. Our goal is people. But how many know that we have to have uh, a building to take care of people? I know you love Jesus. I know you desperately love Jesus. But let's say we just had a parking lot here and no building and we set out a bunch of metal chairs. Would you be here this morning? Anybody? Okay, there's like one guy. So you had one last night. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So the building is not our goal. You he- please hear, Pastor. The building is not the goal. The building is the tool. The building is the tool. Right now, we're using a tool. This building is a tool to worship God. This building is a tool to teach you the word. This building is a tool to reach our students. This building is a tool to do Celebrate Recovery. This building is a tool to do our CAMS Creative Art Ministry. This building is a tool to do leadership development. This building is a tool that the ministry and the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, taught here. This place, I could go on and on. We use this tool seven days a week and we do everything we can to develop it to its maximum, fullest potential. And we have exceeded our capacity here in this place. And if we're going to continue to advance we must give God another tool to work with come on somebody here's the a to assist our uh, assist the needy in our community through opening the peace center I will not take a lot of time to explain the peace to you peace is an acronym for taking on five global giants and the church of Jesus Christ We're committed to take on those giants. There's no government big enough. There's no nation big enough. But the church of Jesus is big enough. A lot of people don't understand just how big the church is. 
Do you know the church of Jesus is bigger than the nation of China? And India? Combined? There are 2.3 billion Christians on the planet. When Jesus said, I'm going to build my church, he went big. And the church is big enough to take on the five global giants. But specifically, the Peace Center is to convert, convert our fusion shop over there into a resource center to partner with local agencies, listen carefully, to provide services in the gap of what's already provided in our community. If a service is provided, we don't need to do that because somebody's already doing that. We want to provide services that partner with agencies that reach what's in the gap because we have incredible resources in this church. We have credible talent in this church. We have incredible leadership in this church. And we want to create a place for assisting our community through the Peace Center. And that's the A of faith. The I is to invest into our growing fellowship by creating additional space so that we can fellowship together better. You know, we do something right now um, that, that I really struggle with. So many times, if, if, if you're in the foyer, if you're, part of, if you're like on one of our teams, worship team or guest team or one of our teams, and you're in the foyer and you're visiting, we'll rebuke you for that. So you're like, what? Yeah, it gets so crowded out there sometimes, it's difficult for new people to get in and out the door sometimes. So we tell our family, you can't visit. What kind of church does that? Well, we're, we're, we do that because we're thinking of new people. But that's not what we want to do. And so we want to create space, unique space, so on the weekends there's better traffic flow in and out of the building. It's going to be cool space, but during the week it will be converted into areas where we can have, our goal is to have 50 support groups, not small groups, support groups, which are targeted help for people who have hurts, habits, struggles in our community, a variety of those, so that those are warm, inviting spaces that can be used during the week so that people can get care that they need. I want you to think again. When I talk about what we're about to do, our faith goals, we're not doing this project for Capital Christian Center. We're doing this project for our community. Because here's what you understand. There's plenty of room in here for us. There's just no room for others. I need you to think that this is not for us. This is for others. Let me ask this question. How many of you have started attending Capital Christian Center uh, since we've been at this location? You started attending when we were here. Keep your hands up. All of you were in our future. And I want you to understand, when we were at our downtown location, we were sharing with our church then, will you be willing to invest, give, pray, serve, so that we can acquire the Lacey Cinemas, so that we can make room in our life for all of you. You were in our future. You were in our future. And we gave, we sacrificed, we served to make room in our hearts and lives for you. And we're glad we did. And that's what we're talking about doing right now. Making room in our hearts and lives. It's one thing to say you love somebody, but you also have to make room for them when you make, say that. Okay. And so to open up 50 unique support groups, which means where God has been redeeming your life, we want to train you and equip you and that you might be one of those support group leaders, whether it's in the area of divorce, whether the loss of a child, whether it's going through some kind of health issue, whether it's going through some kind of uh, addiction, whatever it might be, we want to provide 50 unique support groups to serve our community because you know what? People are looking for help. Do you know the number one thing that people go to the bookstores for? Self-help. But self-help without God's help. If I could help myself, I would have helped myself a long time ago. I, I need somebody else to help me. <laughs> so I'm all, I'm all for self-help, but it only goes so far. There's a, there's a point in there where it's like, God, I need you. And, we want to and people are looking for help. And we're, we want to provide those resources for our community. And we want to be known in our community that says, you got a need, you, got a, you need support. That church is making room in their hearts and lives. Here, here's the fourth. To train our students and adults uh, to grow in their leadership and the discipleship. Uh, why? Because God wants us to develop uh, as mature leaders, grow leaders, disciple people. 
God doesn't want us just to learn Christianity. He wants us to do Christianity. And right now, by how are we going to do that? By adding additional classroom spaces for uh, our education, for our discipleship tracks, uh, for our CAMS Creative Music School that we're doing. Uh, we right now, here's what you need to understand. I was, I was um, sharing this, and I, I became so moved with emotion the other day when I was sharing this in one of the presentations. I became so moved with emotion that uh, we're in one of the most important pieces of property in the whole community. Since we've been here, and some of you, you know, I'm looking around, some of you have been here since we've been here. There's been a lot that's been built around us since we've been here. You know, within just a few blocks, there's been a lot of hotels built. There's been a lot of restaurants built. There's been a lot of development. I mean, I mean, the, this part of the community is, is booming. And, 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 and I noticed that there's like about seven or eight hotels all around us. And I felt in my spirit, God is saying, this is going to be a destination church. And then the other day, we had pastors here from Canada. We had pastors here from Oregon, pastors from Idaho, uh, pastors from California. Uh, coming and, and our monthly pastors training that we do, people come all over. And how cool is it? It's just, just walk across the parking lot. There's a hotel nearby. Because why God wants us to be a training center, a training center. People are being launched from here. And we have such a high military uh, population in our church. You may be here for only a couple years, but we want to equip you, train you, invest in you. We want to teach you the purposes of God. We want to teach you how to run with Christ. We want to teach you uh, before we send you into your next church. I want to get letters from pastors saying thank you for sending those people to our way. For real. Because if, if you're in the military and you leave this church, I want to hear that you did something good wherever you went. I want pastors thanking me for you. Because why? Um, you know, most pastors pray, God, send us a leader. God, send us a leader. I learned a long time ago that they're not coming. <laughs> and then I got to thinking, well, if God does send a leader, then somebody had to develop them. So I said, well, why don't we just develop them? So I'll just take the raw talent we have and we'll develop it. We're, we're just all about developing leaders here. And we need the space for that. And the H is to help bring the good news to the nation of Ghana, and we could say, and beyond, into all the world. But we are specifically partnering. You've heard us talk about this before. Uh, we have a strategic alliance with the most influential denominations in the nation of Ghana. Uh, uh, we will be mentoring hundreds and hundreds of, now when I say hundreds and hundreds of pastors, it's, it's pastors over influential denominations, over influential. And so one particular denomination, I have over 14,000 churches in it in the nation of Ghana that they're wanting us to take them through a three-year developmental plan so that they can learn and implement in their churches the, purpose, the purposes of God and then get to the place where they can launch the peace plan out of their churches. We have been asked to influence the nation of Ghana and uh, that uh, is a big part of what we will be doing in starting in 2017. So those are the five goals. I mean, oh, those are courageous. Yeah, those are courageous. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's going to take God. You know, when you set a goal, you should always set goals that you can't do unless God shows up. Because if, if you set a goal and you can do it without God, uh, then you don't need God. But you should set goals. Uh, at least these goals kind of scare me. But here's the thing, I, I've, I've never chosen to live by my fear. And, and so what we're asking you to do, if you can see, these goals are going to help us to grow in our faith. I mean, we're going to have to grow our faith to accomplish those goals. We're going to have to give in our faith, which means we're going to have to make room in our hearts and lives by generosity uh, to grow our faith. And we're going to have to go in our faith. And so here's what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to, to, to gather together as a family and pray about what God might have you to do over the next 36 months. In a few weeks, in the middle of November, we're going to ask our church family to bring their commitments. I'm going to give you a packet in just a moment that you can take home. Um, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to really encourage you. I, I know this is tempting. I'm going to really encourage you to not open it during service. <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff in there and it's going to fall out and then you're going to get all embarrassed. And, but, I, but I know, but I know. Here's what I know. Uh, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be digging in there and digging all that stuff out. 
I know you're going to be tempted. And if you do, I get it. Uh, so I'm not going to get mad at you. But there's a lot of cool stuff in there. And you're going to get a brochure in there. And it's just going to kind of walk you through a whole bunch of information because we want you to have the information. Uh, one of the things you're going to get in there is a little table tent because we want you to do this with your family. Please understand, we want the children involved in this. Now, it's really important because, because if you help create attachments... People feel belonging. Creating attachments help create belonging. And we want to help every young person because this is not just for a few people. This, this is for all. It's going to take all of us to accomplish this. Let me say it again. It's going to take all of us to accomplish this. And so in there, you're going to get a little table tent, which we're encouraging you to put on your dinner table as a reminder when you sit down with your family to keep this, the vision in front of you, to talk and to pray and to consider what God could and would do through you uh, over this campaign because God's going to do miracles in our midst. So whenever we talk about this, so anyway, let me back up. So you're going to get that packet of information in just a moment. Um, we're going to see how many actually don't read it until they leave. But anyway, that's all cool. Um, uh, you're going to hear a testimony just in a moment of one of our young students here, actually uh, a, a sophomore at St. Martin's College who's grown up in our church. And, and uh, you know, he's the result of the generosity of this church. He's the result of the leadership of this church. He's the result of so many investing and pointing into his life and partnering with his parents who happen to be on the front row with us today. And it's, it's powerful what God does in people's lives. And remember, it's not about buildings. It's about people. But how many know Buildings are a tool, and tools cost money. How many know tools cost money? And we want to give God the tools. So here's some thoughts in your outline there. Uh, I just want to come, when it talks about courageous giving, I just want to encourage you with a couple thoughts so that you can feel informed and just kind of know uh, what this is all about. Here's what we won't do. We won't pressure anyone to give. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Uh, we won't pressure anyone to give. Here's what the scripture says. So let each one give as he what? Purposes in his heart. What does that mean? That means you purpose. I didn't purpose for you. Somebody else didn't purpose for you. You purposed. And how should we purpose? According to the purposes of God. And we should purpose in our hearts out of our relationship with God. Can I ask you a question? Do you think had I not gotten born again, had I not put my life into Christ's hands, that I would be pastoring the church today? No, what did I do? I put my life in God's hands, and he started giving me a purpose for my life. Do you think, had I not put my life in God's hands, that I would be purposing to lead a giving campaign for our church to grow and expand, had I not allowed God to shape my purposes? Here's what I'm trying to say. Let God shape your purpose, because we won't... We won't um, Pressure anyone to give, because here's what it says, not grudgingly or of necessity. You can just circle that word necessity because it means under compulsion. God never wants us to give under compulsion. Never wants us to give because someone made us feel guilty. Never wants us to give because someone made us feel bad. We will share the vision, but we never want people to feel pressure. Here's what we do want. God loves what? For the vision to be accomplished, it will be accomplished by the willing. For the courageous faith goals of this church to be achieved, it will be by the willing. We are here today by the willing. We will be there tomorrow by the willing. God has prevailed in his purposes throughout the earth by the willing. The reason there are two plus billion people who confess Christ is because the advancement of the gospel by the willing. By the willing. you got to catch it. God's just looking for a partner. You've heard us talk about this earlier in our teachings. God's just looking for a partner. And I want us to be a church. And I know that we are. God will partner with you. We'll purpose with you. We'll, we'll, we'd love to do it, God. We're, we're going to devote ourselves, not under pressure, under compulsion. We're just going to devote ourselves, God. Here's the other thing. We won't sell anything. Got, got, got no miracle oil. Got, got, no oil no, got no water from a well in Chernobyl. I actually saw that one one time. It's like, if it's from Chernobyl, just can we keep it there? No, no. 
I, 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 I got no formula for $77. It'll get you $77,000. Got no formulas. In other words, there's no, we will not manipulate people. We don't manipulate people. We're, we're not going to trick people. We're, we're not, we're, this, is not a, this is not a Christian casino. No, I'm driving down the road the other day and saw this casino sign that says, Winners stay here. I'm saying that's manipulation. That is such a lie. No, losers stay there. You built the whole thing off of losers. And most people, and here's why pastor's saying this, most people will give because they're manipulated. Oh, no. Um, we're working with some developers and stuff right now, and, and they're talking about uh, building casinos, and, and, and they're up. One, one casino that's under plan is like $600 per square foot construction. That's crazy money, crazy, insane money. Hundreds of millions of dollars. People are willing to invest because the return is there because people love to be manipulated. And we won't do it. We won't do it. We won't do it. It'll be done because people chose to give out of their love and devotion for Christ, not because some... And, and, and we're not going to sell hot dogs. We can't sell enough hot dogs for this. I know some, some of you mean, well, Pastor, can we do a bake sale? How about you and your small group do a bake sale? That'd be great. As far as the church, it, we don't have bake sale mentality because we, we need more than the bake sale. It's a good idea, but we're not going to sell anything. We're not going to manipulate anybody. Here's the other thing. We won't mix giving with personal promotions. And I need to say that because every time we talk about something like this, somebody always wants me to sell their product. And if I sell their product, they're going to give the church a bunch of money. We don't do that. I, I, we, anyway, we just don't do that. Here's what we will do, though. Here's what we will do. We will show how everyone can give something. Here's a scripture for you. Then the poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said. Now, wait a minute. You know what that means? That means Jesus was watching what people gave. And it means that while they were in the process of giving and bringing their offerings forward, Jesus stopped the service to talk about what the one woman gave because it was significant to her and here's what you need to understand if it's meaningful to you it'll be meaningful to God if it doesn't mean anything to you it won't mean anything to God it's not about equal gift but it is about equal sacrifice and so see the scripture says I tell you the truth this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions it's a myth, it's a myth, it's a myth, you can't give anything. It's a myth. It's a myth. I, I can't do anything. That is a myth. That is a myth. The Bible says that God will give seed to the sower. And one of the things we're really encouraging you to do, and you'll see that in the packet of information, is to spend time talking to your family, and we encourage you to get your children involved. Actually help your children set goals. Three years, happens to be 36 months, which also happens to be 156 weeks. We're encouraging, even if it's a dollar, get a young person giving a dollar a week, $156 over three years. They could do it. They can collect kittens. They could do it. But here's what I'm saying. Young people have a way of growing up in the church. And for $156, the boys of the Bible say, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also See, when we're building something like this, what we, we're, we're building it to leave a legacy. But sometimes when you leave a legacy, if no one had no investment in it, they don't care about your legacy. Well, that's really good preaching right there. Some of you, you, you need to catch what I'm saying. Sometimes you leave a legacy, but if no, people don't have an investment into it, they don't care about it. So we're encouraging all, everyone to participate, every, every young person to participate, every couple to participate at because it's a myth that we can't give something here's the th second thing we will ask people to sacrifice David said I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing and here's what you need to understand there is a difference between a fun raising campaign and a giving campaign the difference is simply this in a fundraising campaign funds are raised for a recognition a promotion, a, 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 to be labeled for, for some kind of reward. 
And usually that's where you name a baseball stadium or you name something after somebody. And, and that's funds are collected from outsiders to take care of the nonprofit. That's not what this is. A giving campaign is where those in give out of themselves for the campaign so that funds are raised by their generosity. And the difference being because in a fundraising campaign, we're thinking somebody else needs to pay for it. But in a giving campaign, it says, no, we'll pay for it. We'll trust God. We'll pay for it. Because here's why that's important. Uh, the, government, the government is not going to build our buildings for us. Now, somebody was telling me the other day, uh, you know, like, like this year, they're, pro they're projecting, projecting $2 billion revenue off of marijuana. And what they were actually telling me is because they haven't got everything worked out with the federal government, they can't even use that money yet. It's on lockdown. <laughs> A couple billion dollars sitting around there just waiting to use. Right? Come on, somebody. But they're not going to give us any of it. No, ain't none of it coming our way. There, there, there is no dope money going to build our sanctuary. <laughs> right? You know, Bill Gates ain't, Bill Gates, Bill Gates ain't going to do it. No, no, he, he's going to give it all away. He's giving away billions. And I, he's an incredibly generous guy. But he ain't giving us any. No, no, he's not giving us any. You know, uh, uh, so who's going to give it? We are. So we will not do that for God, which costs us nothing. Because if it doesn't cost us something, we don't understand the kingdom principle of sacrifice. And that's a kingdom principle. Here's the other thing. We will follow the biblical pattern for a building offering. And you can read about it in 1 Chronicles 29. And it's simply this. David said, I prepare with all my heart this gift for God. So the leader goes first. Kelly and I, we are working through and we will lead in giving. We may not give the biggest gift. We're going to try to. But we are praying, believing. We're, here's what we're doing. We're doing two things. We're figuring out what we can give reasonably. And then we're saying, God, what would you have us give by faith in addition to that? So it'll be reasonable by managing our budget, developing our budget, making room in our budget for, to give. And then, God, what would you speak to our heart beyond that to stretch us in our faith? Because it's giving by faith. And then we're going to ask the leaders to give. Then the leaders of this house will give. Because we're not asking our congregation to do something we will not model, and we will not set the example, and we will not set the way. And then we as the leaders will give. And then we will share that with our church family in advance of asking our congregation to give. I think it's November 18th, 19th, that weekend, to give their gift to our church family. So, so we will let you know, and we'll follow, and that's a biblical pattern of how David gave it. And his comment was, God, everything we give you, we simply took out of your hand to give back to you. Because everything we have actually comes from God. The earth is the Lord's. He owns it all. We're just sharing with him what he shared with us. And now it's called mutual relationship. It's called fellowship, actually. And, it, and it's a mutuality of just sharing with God. And here's what I want to say to you. If you're willing to share with God, God will do amazing things in your life. Because here's some things we expect to see. We expect to see miracles. Come on, when, you, when we get into all this faith, how many know God's going to do some miracles around here? Oh, God's going to do some miracles. Somebody was telling me the other day, uh, you know, because they're praying and planning on giving. They, they were telling me the other day, they had a six-figure, a significant, a, a high six-figure windfall come their way. And they're praying about how they can give. So, somebody else was here on Thursday night. They drive three hours to get to our church. Drive three hours, serve on our ministry teams, Part, part, uh, they don't make it every weekend, but they'll come regularly. So they heard that we were sharing the vision with one of our teams. So they drove over to hear the vision. They were sharing with me uh, with almost tears in their eyes. And pastor, um, years ago when I started coming to this church, I was basically homeless. I, was, I had disability at time and, and I had just gotten put off a of disability and I got my last $200 check. And he's telling me with tears in his eyes this year, uh, and it's about the last less, less than 10 years, he goes, and this year I will make, I will make a six figure income. And I'm so grateful for what God has done in my life. Before he got home, before he got home, before he got home, he had gotten another 5% raise. This is on Thursday. This is on Thursday. He got another 5%. He, he, he texts and says, uh, my wife and I have already talked it over. We want to share that 5% raise for courageous faith. See, you can expect to see miracles. In a minute, we'll share another video with you of one of our young leaders here that stepped out in faith and started trusting God. Here's the other thing. 
um, you will grow spiritually. You can't step out in faith and not grow. You can't say, God, I want to give and not grow. You can't say, God, I want to go and not grow. So as we do this, we will grow inside as a church. How many know if we grow inside, we'll grow, uh, we'll grow in our influence and our impact in our community. Here's the other thing. Um, uh, we will be spiritually harassed. I'm just going to go ahead and say that up front right now. Uh, you might as well go get ready. Uh, the devil does not want this to happen. I'm just, let me just give you four. Get your armor on. Put your shield, put your breastplate of righteousness on, put your belt on, get your sword, get your helmet on, get your truth on, get, your, get the gospel on your feet, and get dressed up because the devil does not want God's kingdom to advance. But I have a question. When have we ever decided what we were going to do based on what he wanted? But he will, he will oppose the work of God. And don't get distracted by his attacks. Don't get distracted by his his, his harassment. Don't get distracted by what the enemy will try to do. Remember, say, okay, there is a spiritual component to this. There is a spiritual battle. I'm going to fight for my focus. I'm going to fight for my focus. I'm going to fight for my focus for the purposes of God to be expanded in the earth. Because how many know if we can stay unified, we can be effective. But if we get divided, we lose our power. And the enemy will try to divide us and we have to say, no, you, you can harass me. Do you, do you know when the names for the devil is? Beelzebub. You know what that means? The Lord of dung. The Lord of flies. What do flies do? Irritate you. Harass you. It's all over the place. Just distracting you. How many know when you get a bunch of insects bothering you, it's just irritating. But they can't stop you from doing what you want to do if you stay focused on what you want to do. Here's the other thing. You experience real joy. You will experience real joy. See, for me, I have this unique perspective that when I started Capital Christian Center, none of you were there yet. And you're, you're part of the joy of my giving. You're part of the joy of what God has done in my life. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Here's a kingdom principle. Most people are focused on what they get out of life. They're focused on what they don't have in life. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. When you choose to become a giver, you'll find that you receive so much more. Can I say that again? When I choose to be a giver, I find myself experiencing so much more. Let me say it again. When I choose to be a giver, I'll find God adding so much more to my life. So you will experience real joy because joy is not about what i add to me joy is about what i add to others now here are three things that are people going to react to a giving campaign so i'm just is this okay if i just educate us a little bit today you know it's like i said if you're new thank you for coming today you're an incredibly important season of capital christian center and uh you know we're just having a little bit of family talk but the reason we're having this family talk is for people like you it's because we care about you. And so we're glad that you're here today. And uh, thanks for letting us have a little family talk with you. We'll expect three different reactions. Number one is those who will give no matter what. What I mean by that, it's not no matter what, what, but it's, it's, they just understand spiritual maturity. They understand giving. You know, whenever we do a kingdom builder thing around here, they give. Whenever we're trying to accomplish something, they give. There's just a group of people who are spiritually mature and understand that giving is a part of the Christian lifestyle and whatever the vision is, you know, if it's going to advance the kingdom of God, if it's going to help people, we want to be a part of it. We're just going to give. And you know who you are. It's a, it's a matter, you know, you're going to give to this because this is what we're talking about. And if we were talking about something else, you'd give to that because that's just who you are. You're, you know, we're just givers, right? And so there's a group of people who are going to give no matter what. And then there's another group that's going to not give no matter what we do. It doesn't matter. They're just not going to give. And here's three reasons. And you need to understand these three reasons. One is because of hurt. You know, maybe they're in some pain right now. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe they're battling cancer. Maybe, maybe they've got some crisis going on in their life. Maybe they're just caught up in some sin that's sabotaging their life. And when people are hurting, it's just hard for them to think about anything else. And I get it, okay? And that's why we're here. We're here for what? 
hurting people. And so we just, if you're hurting, we just want to minister to you. We want to add value to you. We want to resource you. And, 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 and so we get it. And when you get healed and you get strong, then join us in the, in the journey. Uh, there was a time in my life when, when, when I was going through a really dark time in my life. You know, it was hard for me to think about anything else than just get through the day. You may know what I'm talking about. It's just hard to think about anything more than just get through the day. And we get that. So we don't want people to feel bad or guilty about that uh, because they're just hurting and we just want to minister to people who are hurting. And then there's another group of people who, who won't give because of their immaturity. Uh, and they just, they, you know, they just don't know. You know, they're like children in your house. They don't know how the food gets in the refrigerator. They, they don't know how the mortgage gets paid. They, they just, you know, they just don't understand that it takes money for ministry. Can I say that again? They don't make the connection Somebody had to pay the light bill this month. Somebody had to pay the mortgage this month. You know, on Saturday night, I was sharing last night, on Saturday night we do this thing called date night. Date night. Date night, we provide child care till 1030 at night. You, you, you know, uh, we, we pay thousands of dollars a month in payroll for date night, which is a free service to our community. Somebody had to pay for that? Come on, somebody. You know, and, and, we're, and, and, and people hear about that, and, and we're helping marriages, we're supporting families, and I could go on and on. Somebody had to pay for that. And, and they just simply don't understand, and we want to educate people to understand it. it. It takes resources, and that's okay, because what the Bible says, and the, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. God will resource us if we'll trust him. Here, here's the other reason. It's, it's just because of their own selfishness. They, they just don't want to. I really don't care about God's house. I care about my stuff, my stuff, my toys. You know, there's no way they'll go, it's to go something like this. There's no way I'm going to make a three-year giving commitment to the church. But they'll make a three-year giving commitment to their quad, their snowmobile, their boat. See, they're not afraid to make financial commitments as long as it's to themselves. They'll make a financial commitment for their car, make a financial commitment for their house. They'll, they'll make a, a commitment that will never end to their credit card. But to make a commitment to God, it's like, I ain't gonna do that. Church just wants my money. No, you're selfish and you don't wanna share. And I, here's what I'm saying. To the, immature, or to the hurting, help me minister to them. To the immature, help me educate them. To the selfish, leave them alone. That's my job to confront that in people through the ministry of God's Word. So, so if you find selfish people, just, just don't tangle with them because they'll get you all jacked up. And, and you know, you, you just, no, they're, they're toxic. Selfish people are toxic. And so you have to be aware of that. And so, but here's the thing. We're not going to let selfish people keep us from dreaming big and going after God's blessing and God's favor on this place because there's a group of people who will catch the vision. That's the third group, those who will catch the vision. And that's why I thank you for letting me share so much of you today, this presentation with you about what the vision is and what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish because we want you to catch the vision. We want you to hear about what God is doing. Now, there's a lesson outline which we are not going to get to today, um, but I do want to show you this video. And while we show you this video, and this is a, several minutes about a young leader in our church about stepping out in faith. And while they do, the ushers are going to pass out one of those uh, uh, packets. As it comes by, just grab it and hang on to it. But check out this video and then we'll pray. Hi, my name is Nick Hollander, and this is how I stepped out in Courageous Faith. I'm currently a second year, a sophomore, over at uh, St. Martin's University. Um, great education, great faculty, great teachers. Um, and up to this point, I have gotten a lot of financial aid. I've truly been blessed by God in this. I've truly been blessed by St. Martin's. Um, but going into the school year, I still had $7,000 that I had to pay. And so I'd been trying to get my FAFSA figured out. I had uh, resubmitted it multiple times and everything seemed to be going against it and nothing was really moving forward. And I pretty much had, at the time, two weeks to have a plan and make my payment. $7,000 is, is not feasible. Uh, for me. It's just not, it's not feasible for my family and I was stuck and I didn't quite know what to do. Um, 
Now, in the middle of all that, uh, we as a church were starting the Courageous Faith campaign. Um, and I was involved with different uh, service planning elements or youth worship, of course. And I also decided to start a small group on my St. Martin's campus to really uh, help grow the young adults ministry and connect uh, my school to here. But really, everything seemed easy. Um, there wasn't a whole lot um, that was challenging me. There wasn't any need for me to step out in faith. It was just simple. Um, of course, once I kind of got comfortable in that thinking, um, that's when God kind of challenged me. Um, how that happened was we, uh, in different services, had been talking about making financial commitments. Uh, I've heard Dave talk about it, heard it in different children's ministries. Um, but for myself, I wasn't planning on making a financial commitment. Um, especially not for this first six to ten weeks. Um, really, I couldn't. Now, that slightly changed when uh, on a Wednesday night, it was for youth, and we had mason jars lined up up front, and each student was supposed to take one and uh, kind of write down what kind of financial commitment they wanted to make, what did they want to give uh, in this next journey that we're on. And right there is when I felt God say to me, I want you to give a thousand dollars. And that completely shocked me. Um, really, I wasn't at a place where I could. Uh, and I was slightly frustrated with God because He knew I wasn't able, I wasn't capable of doing that. Um, I even wrote down in my notebook, uh, I think God is wanting me to give a thousand dollars, dot, dot, dot but I have no clue how. Um, and that's genuinely where I was at that moment. So on October 5th was uh, the day that I felt like God was asking me to give that thousand dollars. And then on the very next day, October 6th, I was at um, Starbucks applying for jobs. And I ended up on a phone call with my dad and he proceeded to tell me that uh, my school balance was completely paid for uh, the school was actually sending me a check for $500 and in addition to that I'd be getting an additional uh, $1,700 both this semester and next semester. And I was in complete shock and awe uh, because the day before I had nothing and the next day um, I could give the $1,000 that God was asking me to give. and. In all my years being in this church, uh, I've never necessarily been challenged in my faith like that. And seeing him pull through and come through, literally not even 24 hours later, um, it really opened my eyes to um, how big the God that I serve is and that I can rely on that same God for the rest of my life and every time that he will challenge me in the future I can trust that he's on my side and that he's for me um, and so really this opportunity gave me uh, the chance to really step out in courageous faith and internalize that and understand what that means I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, to have a God that when I step out in courageous faith, I know for a fact he'll catch me. Come on! Do you, do you, think, do you think he's ever going to forget that? No. Can I pray for you? Father, I just thank you right now as we launch into this next season of what you have for us. I thank you that we're a church of courage, that men and women are going to hear, respond to your voice and to your leadership. So, Father, I thank you for this congregation that want to give you a tool to help you reach our community. So, Father, I pray favor on them, pray wisdom on them, pray opportunity on them, open doors for them, bring promotion to them, prosper them, God. Father, just like you did, Nick, if you can get it through us, you'll get it to us. So let us just start with the willingness, and you'll provide the ability.